Tidy Select Helpers are underrated. They are a great tool to help you to select all of the columns that you need. While this sounds super mundane, it helps you to do a lot of calculations in one go. For example, you can use Tidy Select Helpers in a cross to target multiple columns and then apply the same functions to all of them. This can help you to transform a lot of columns from one unit to a different unit. And if you have a lot of columns, it can be super tedious to type out all of the columns that you want to convert, but with a tidy select helper, it's just one line of code. And this is what I'm showing you in this video. In my quarto file, I have already put in a code chunk that loads the tidyverse, extracts the penguins data from the Parma penguins package and puts it into a new variable called penguins. And then I have created a little bit of code to first convert the columns that give the lengths in millimeters to centimeters by dividing them by 10. And then I had to remove the columns that I don't want anymore because these millimeter columns I simply want to remove here. So this is why I put them into the select call, but use a minus to remove them. So if I execute all of this, I get this data set here. can make this a little bit larger so that we see all of the columns here. But now notice that this is very repetitive here. We do the exact same thing to three columns. And if there were even more columns that are in millimeters, then we would have to repeat this even more, which is tedious and also kind of a sure way to make copy and paste mistakes. So this is why I will show you how to use tidy select here to make our life easier. So first let us talk about how to select new stuff in general. So let's take our penguins data set here and then pass this to select. One of the things we can do is to simply get columns by their index. So we want to get the second, third and fourth column. This will give us these here. We could also get the exact same result by using the column names instead. Say we want to get everything between the sex column and the build up centimeter column. So let's put in sex here and then do a colon, which means that we want to get the column all the way to say bill. I think I said bill depth just a second ago. In any case, we can just get the columns that we want. And you can always combine these selection helpers. This is in fact a selection helper, this colon here, because it helps you to get consecutive columns. You can always combine these things with extra statements like maybe you want to get the island column too. So just throw this in there with a comma too. And then you get the island column as well. Now grabbing column in a consecutive way is sometimes neat, but also in a lot of cases, that's not really what we want. For example, maybe you want to get all of the columns that have numbers in them because you want to do some number calculations with that stuff. So that way we could do a consecutive grabbing of the column here via the colon operator and then add year to that. But that's only because the data right now is structured like this. If we would always have some numeric column and then something like species where there is text in there and then numeric again and then text again, then we would have to do a lot of typing because you can do this consecutive thing. So instead there is another tidy select helper, which can make our life a little bit easier in that case, not only a little bit, quite easier actually. And it is called the where function. It is a function, so it, it needs another function that tells us which columns we want to get. And in this case, we want to use the isNumeric function. And the way this works is that this where function takes this new function isNumeric and applies it to all of the columns that we have in the data set. And only in those situations where isNumeric returns true, where it says, yep, this one fulfills my condition, then we get this one back. And in this case, the isNumeric function only returns those columns where there is numeric data inside of it. Alternatively, you could also use is factor here, and then you would get all of the factor columns. It's kind of neat, but you have to remember that it's like a two-step process here inside of select. First, you need this where function, and inside of this function, you need another function that returns the true and falses, depending on the kind of column that you put into it. You don't actually have to put the column into this new function yourself. This is what the where function does, but you have to tell it the name of the function that you want to use. Notice that when I wanted to autocomplete this, so let me just remove this here. And then when I press tab to autocomplete this, it will automatically put in these parentheses here because usually we want to call the function, this one here, we want to call it ourselves. And this is why we then use these parentheses and then stick some arguments in there. But this is not what we can do here. If we do that, we get an error because we have to tell the where function what the name is of the function that is supposed to be used and not call that function ourselves. So just be aware that you have to remove these parentheses here. 
and then everything works again. Again, this where function is the function that does all of the calling of sticking in columns into a function. But to do that, it needs to know what the function name is of the function that is supposed to be called all the time. And that's why you pass in the name and don't execute this yourself with these extra parentheses. So don't put them in there, only the function name, and then you're good to go. So this combination here is a really powerful one because you can replace these functions with a custom function yourself. But that's not really what we want to do here. We want to go with this simple examples, but even with just the simple examples where you use a predefined function, you can imagine that if the data set that you have has more than just this eight columns, but 30, this is just a regular size in today's times. It's not really hard to find a data set that has 30 columns. Then it will be really helpful to use this combination here to just take all of the numeric columns or factor columns or whatever. Okay, so just keep this one in mind. But there are, of course, other tidy select helpers that use the name again. For example, in our use case, we wanted to convert all of the columns that are given in millimeters. They are all conveniently named with underscore mm. And if we don't want to get all of the numeric columns, for example, if we get all of the numeric columns, we'll also get the body mass G and the year column. If we want to get only those that are given in millimeters, then we can look for columns that have this underscore mm inside of their name. And the way to do that is to use the penguins data set and pass it to select again. And then in there, use a different tidy select helper. In this case, it is the contains function. And then we can look for something like mm. And this way we get all of the columns that we want. In this particular case, we could also use some other function. We could also use ends with because all of the column names end with mm. This is sometimes helpful if, for example, you have a really obvious pattern. I don't know what, but if that pattern also comes in in the middle of the word, because some word is simply spelled with two m's, then you will run into trouble if you use contains. But if you use ends with, you don't have that problem because you only want to have those column names where the name ends with mm. And this makes it really easier to get the right columns here. Similarly, you could also take this data and use the starts with function. And here we could use it to get only the bill data. So let's put in bill in there. And then we get only the columns that are corresponding to the bill length or the bill depth. So with that, we have learned a couple of tidy select helpers. And this helps us to make our example a little bit easier here. So let's put this into new code chunk. And here we could replace this one here with ends with millimeters. And this will get rid of the columns that we don't want anymore because we're using the centimeter versions again. And that way we can even put this into one line because it's a really short one. It will give us the exact same data set as before, but it's a little bit less typing. And again, in a larger data set, it will save you even more work than in a small data set that has only eight columns here. But another reason why I like these tidy select helpers is because they can help you do calculations like these as well. Let's just copy and paste this code chunk so that we can compare this later on too. And then we can replace this part here with the across function. This function is a really nice helper. It isn't a tidy select helper, but it's a helper function that you can use in things like mutate, where you can select a couple of columns and then apply a function to all of these columns. In this case, the function that we apply would be a simple one that just divides by 10. Let's actually make one. Let's do divide by 10. And this one will just divide a value by 10. So inside of this function, we can use the calls argument to specify the calls and we can specify the function. And in this case, it's just a divide by 10 function. Now to select all of the columns that we want to apply this on, we can use a tidy select helper again. So let's put this in here and let's remove that part. And then if we execute the whole code chunk and not just this one line, then we see that everything was converted to centimeters. You can see here that these numbers are smaller. See, they're all just divided by 10. But in this approach, we see that the columns get modified. You see that this one here is still called millimeters and not centimeters. So that is why this across function has a really nice helper to also rename the columns that you've just modified. And the way to do that is to use the names argument. And inside of this argument, you can use these brackets to also use code. So this is why you can, for example, use the string remove function to from a given column name, remove this underscore mm. So that is why you use this dot call notation. This is one that works in across. So you say that use the string remove function on the column names and in there remove this underscore mm. And if you do that, you see that there are new columns in here. The old ones are still preserved. You get new columns here, bill length, bill depth, flipper length. But we really want to signal that these are in centimeters. So let's 
put this in there as well. If we do this outside of the brackets here, it is not doing code anymore. It is just using the text that is added at the end of this. So now we see that the new columns have the new names and then we can do the same stuff as before and remove the ones that we don't need anymore. In this case, the one in millimeters. And that way we have converted all of the millimeter columns to centimeters. This example here was really just to demonstrate that you can use these tidy select helpers in a lot of places and not just inside of select. And once again, imagine that you have a data set with 30 columns that all have columns that are in millimeters and you want to convert all of that information to centimeters, then this exact code works on this same data set as well. You don't even have to change anything, you just have to replace your data set with this one here. Assuming that the data set is named in the same way so that all the columns and with millimeters are actually in millimeters. And with that, we have completed our video on tidy select helpers. If you want, you can find all of the code that you have seen inside of this video in our blog post that we link in the description of this video. So thank you for watching and see you next time.